One last group of climbing hitches we'd like to talk about are the French Prussic hitches. There are a lot of variations in this knot, but one common way to tie it is by taking one short I and I piece. And this configuration is actually a Val de Tente tress, or VT. Now what I will do is wrap upwards. I'll take four turns. And now I will crisscross or braid down three times and clip into the eyes. Now, in the same way that Rip showed the Swabish Prusik and the Distal, I can clip in with a micro pulley and a pear shaped carabiner, tie, dress, and set. Now it's obviously important to make sure this is dressed properly. This can be a bit of a temperamental knot. I want to make sure that I have it dressed. Now I mentioned there are some different variations on the French Prusik. Ken is tied in with an endless loop and done four wraps up top and three crosses down. Now tied in an endless loop, this will be referred to as the Mushad Tress, or MT. This is actually the first way that I saw the French Pressic family of climbing hitches used uh, by a Belgian fellow, Francois Dussain. And we learned by experimentation that it really did have some limitations. Now those limitations had much to do with the knowledge and the expertise and the experience of the user. There are variations and there are different lines in a specific length that needs to be used. It's kind of a temperamental climbing hitch. We actually use it in rigging where we can add as many turns and as many crosses as we want so we can grab a hold of that rope very firmly and not have any concern about it sliding whereas used both of these used in a climbing application we're trying to walk that very fine line where we have just enough friction to hold us yet when we go to release it goes for us okay and uh, these two hitches I know uh, when you do release them they really do release completely it, they're a bit more like a splice in a way, I find, in the sense that the friction is spread out over a greater area, yet when they're collapsed, they open right up and release the climbing line, and you go. So it's one that needs to be used very carefully. And because there are so many nuances and different methods of, of tying the French Pressix and different combinations, we, we really need to look closely at limitations. For example, I mentioned the length of the loop, or here in your case, the I and I pressing, also the diameter and the softness or suppleness versus stiffness in a more static rope, for example, will make a difference in its ability to grab and hold on the rope. You really have to pay attention to many different features and when you're gonna be understanding the nuances of how to use either one of these hitches in a climbing situation.